Hi, I'm Patty, and I am going to show you today how to make the world's best Irish soda bread. Non-traditional, but delicious. Um, if you saw part one, you can follow along. If you didn't, go back and look at part one. There's a little bit of prep that's done the night before. So the first thing we're going to do is get our pan ready. I use a bundt pan. There we go. Um, when I was selling, when I was catering and I was selling these, I had to do multiple in the oven at the same time. Couldn't fit very many bun pans in the oven. So what I would do was be to take a half sheet tray with parchment or a Silpac pad on it and I would just use the rings of multiple bun pans and lay them down and put the dough in the middle. Worked beautifully. So if you are one of those people that are making for family and friends and you need to do multiples, just something to keep in mind. So what I'm gonna do here is just take a piece of parchment, lay it on top of the base, press it down, clip, and that's pretty much it. Um, without to take my spray out, I give it a quick spritz. You can butter it. It's just for extra precaution, not absolutely necessary. So we're gonna put this to the side. My oven is preheating at 350 degrees. And here we go. Now, if you saw part one, you saw that I had currants and orange peel that I soaked in a combination of Grand Marnier and orange juice. Like I said, a little untraditional. That's this. You will see that they've soaked up a lot and instead of hard little pebbles in the bread, you're going to get soft, plump, juicy, currants or raisins, whatever you choose to use. Now, I'm going to drain some of this. You'll see this jar already has a little liquid in it from a bread I made yesterday. I'm saving the liquid. You can discard it, but I'm working on an orange pound cake and I'm thinking this would be awesome to use for the liquid in my cake. So I'm gonna save it. Now, when you drain it, don't drain every last drop. You want a little of this yummy marinade to go into your bread to help keep it moist. There we go. That's pretty much it. Put that off to the side. This will go in the fridge. Okay. First thing we do is four and a half cups of all-purpose flour. I had someone ask me if I've ever made this with any other kind of flour. She specifically mentioned cassava. Um, I have not. When I developed this recipe, I just used good old King Arthur's. Um, I was doing it for my catering business and it was more general public that was purchasing, um, but if you have dietary restrictions, you might wanna try it. I might actually try it. I have multiple flowers in my pantry, uh, brown rice, coconut, all kinds. So I may just give it a try. And this is four. And a half. You notice I'm not scooping in. Spoon your flour in, sweep it off. There you go. You don't want to pack the flour. Okay. I need one and a quarter cups of sugar. As I said, this soda bread was made to appeal to a more general Americanized um, clientele. It's a bit sweeter. It's definitely not the stuff you find in the supermarket. It's a little sweeter. It's a little moister. So it calls for a cup and a quarter of sugar. I use organic, less processed sugar. 
You can cut this down if you want to. Um, I would give it a try the way written first and then see how you feel about it. It's not overly sweet. Keep in mind there's four and a half cups of flour in here. So one and a quarter cups of sugar is not outrageous. So one and one quarter. There we go. Get this out of the way. Okay, we need two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. We're going to mix this in. This is a very simple recipe. There's no kneading involved. One, two, and a half. Uh, it's all done in the mixer. There we go. So it's really easy to do. One teaspoon of baking soda. There we go. And a half a teaspoon of salt. I use sea salt, whatever your preference is. I've also done it with Himalayan pink salt, uh, which I use a lot. Okay. I'm going to put this down and just give it a quick stir on low so I don't wear it to mix the ingredients. Okay. Now, here's where I dump in the currants with that bit of liquid. There we go. I actually think I'd like just a hair more of that liquid. That was a little bit dry for my taste. And I have one stick a very soft room temperature butter. Oh, doesn't want to go in. There we go. And I'm going to give that a quick stir. Okay. Now, Two cups of buttermilk. I managed to score whole milk buttermilk at our local supermarket. I know when I was in New York, all I could find was low fat and that worked just fine. So totally up to you. I like the richness of the whole milk. Okay. Wow, this buttermilk really needs a shake. Very thick. There we go. We need two cups. Okay. And I need a half a cup of heavy cream. Oh, would help if I opened it, wouldn't it? Clearly everything in the kitchen doesn't go exactly perfectly the way I envision this video going, but hey, it is what it is. Okay. One egg. I took this out earlier so it would be at room temperature. Not absolutely mandatory, but when baking, if you can plan ahead and have your ingredients at room temperature, it is definitely better. I'm just going to give it a quick whisk, mix it with our milk and cream. On low, I have it set at about a two right now, and I'm going to pour this in. And I'm wearing it. So much for not wearing it. Lift it up. I just want to scrape down the sides and give it one more mix.
as you can see, this is not a bread dough. This is a thick batter. There's a difference. Okay. And you can hear our puppy going crazy because she sees someone walking outside. Nova, go lay down. She's six months old and thinks the entire world wants to play with her. Doesn't understand why she can't be outside greeting the world as they pass our house. But we love her to death and she's very, very spoiled. I hear you. Okay. Now, take the bowl, go to the bottom. There's always going to be some flour. Make sure it's mixed in well. This is a thick, heavy dough, as you can see. And I have to tell you, it smells really good already and it isn't even baked yet mm. okay dump it in the pan You can see how thick this is, and I can't tell you how heavy it is. I will tell you that when it's baked, this loaf is about three and a half to four pounds. My husband actually weighed it when we were catering. So in comparison to those little supermarket loaves, this ain't it. Okay. It doesn't need to go to the edge of the pan. Trust me, it will do that on its own. Now, this is what I do. Hang on one second. Definitely not mandatory, but if you want the traditional cross cut in the bread, obviously this isn't a dough. You can't just cut a cross in it. So what I do, as I smear just a little bit of the batter on a knife, my own little hack. And I tap some flour onto it. Don't dump your knife in the flour bowl. That would not be good. There you go, the knife is floured. And I just give it a quick cut through and try to separate just a little bit. Now, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. If you're lucky, when the bread bakes, you'll have a cross on top. If not, you'll still have a delicious loaf of bread. This is going to go in the oven at 350 degrees at 45 minutes. Take a look at it. It will probably be getting rather brown on top. Take a small piece of aluminum foil, just lay it on top of the pan and keep going. It's going to take somewhere between 60 and 90 minutes, depending on your oven. In my oven, it takes a good 80 to 85 minutes. The internal temperature of the bread needs to be 190 degrees. When it hits 190, pull it out before it dries out. I use a thermometer to be absolutely sure I got in the habit of that when I was catering. I also have this little gadget which I've used and works pretty well. It's called a bunk thermometer. You see it has a black tip. Put it in your bread, any breads, pull it out. If the tip turns bright red, it's cooked. I found it's not always 100% accurate. I have had bread overcook a bit and I've had bread undercook a bit. So I really suggest the thermometer, but you do you. You could also just take a skewer or a knife, poke it all the way in, pull it out, make sure there are no wet bits on it. So it's going in the oven. I'll see you in about an hour and a half.